has been brewing for three years. Hagler saw Hearns in his future as far back as 1982. They were scheduled to meet, but a Hearns hand injury intervened. My corner man was for injury. And when I go in there, I want to be in tip-top condition and great health. Finally, the fight was canceled. Hagler was livid. And he was going to make $2 million. He turned down $2 million. The first beginning, Ray, he started complaining about his little baby pinky. You know how many people will give a million dollars for that little baby pinky? They cut that thing off. And come April 15th, in three rounds, I would be the greatest. And Tommy said, I'm going to be laying down there. His hands are going to be raised. I feel almost the same way, but when the smoke clears, because I'm coming out smoking, as you know, but uh, when the smoke clears, it be my hands that will be raised. After three long years, the war of words will be settled amidst the neon of Las Vegas, Nevada. Hagler and Hearns have descended upon Caesar's Palace to end their dispute and treat the public to the fight of the year. The hype is over and the drama begins as we await the opening bell between two great champions, marvelous Marvin Hagler and Thomas Hearns. And we are live from Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, where Top Rank presents World Championship Boxing. It's time for the main event. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. Marvelous Marvin Hagler against Thomas Hitman Hearn. And look at this scene here. You know the middleweight division has always been one of the most popular. The men are big enough to hurt. They're little enough to be quick, deceptive in the ring. Sugar Ray Robinson is here tonight. He's been voted the greatest middleweight champ of all time. How about the two old-timers? Stanley Ketchell, the Michigan assassin. Harry Greb, who fought the last part of his career with one eye. Then there was a toy bulldog, Mickey Walker, who lived on the fast track. And the smooth man from Argentina, Carlos Monzon, who defended his middleweight title 14 times. And that's the goal, the mark, that Marvin Hagler is after. So there you have some of the great middleweights of all time. Gene Fulmer's here tonight, Carmen Basilio from Syracuse, and you've already met Jake LaMotta. Right now, we're going to meet the fighters themselves. We're going to see some of their highlights of their career, and we're going to hear them from the last moment now in person. First, a look at the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated middleweight champion of the world, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. The road to the title was frustrating for the Marvelous One. It was back on November 30th, 1979, that Hagler had his first shot at Vito Antwerfermo's middleweight crown. In one of the most controversial decisions in the last decade, the fight was ruled a draw. Vito kept the belt, and Marvin walked away empty and bitter. But he used that anger almost one year later to fuel a vicious assault on the reigning champion, Alan Minter. Hagler had promised not to leave the decision in the hands of the judges. After seven long years and three brutal rounds, marvelous Marvin Hagler had won the middleweight title. Yet even in victory, a hostile British crowd hurled bottles rather than accolades at the new champion. With each defense, his image grew. On October 3rd, 1981, in his third defense, Hagler was deadly accurate. He pitched an 11-round shutout of Mustafa Hamsho. The 55 stitches administered to the challenger have now become a grotesque reminder of Hagler's dominance. A year later, Florencio Oval Mejias had risen from the depths of the previous loss to the middleweight champion. This deadly right hand may have been Hagler's most devastating one-punch knockout of his career. Fully Oval would not return again. February 11th, 1983, in his sixth defense at Cup Brett, Tony Simpson fought hard for six rounds. But Marvelous Marvin was just too strong. In typical Hagler fashion, the number one challenger was beaten into the canvas. November 10, 1983, marvelous Marvin Hagler took on the legendary Roberto Duran. It has been said that the champion gave the challenger too much respect. But in the end, after 15 rounds, Hagler had won the unanimous decision. He had his long-awaited recognition as a dominant middleweight champion. But by not winning convincingly, Hagler had left a hint of doubt. His last 
defense was October 19th, 1984. Remarkably, Mustafa Hamshow had returned as the number one contender. His reward was more punishment from the champion. This time it lasted only three rounds as the undisputed middleweight champion, marvelous Marvin Hagler, restored his image as one of the most powerful forces in boxing today. No wonder is he called the Motor City Dokra. He has returned as Thomas, the Hitman. Thomas Hearns exploded from the Motor City with a ferocity rarely seen in the sport of boxing. As the WBA Willoway champion, his lethal combinations destroyed challengers like Pablo Baez. After 32 consecutive wins, a dream match had been made. The showdown of September 16, 1981 will live on as a classic. Hearns took the early lead from Sugar Ray Leonard, but in the sixth, the gutsy WBC champion had Thomas in desperate trouble. The tide had turned. Remarkably, Hearns outboxed Leonard in rounds 8 through 12. And here in the 11th, it was Leonard who was struggling to survive with a battered left eye. A hit on all three scorecards, Thomas Hearns had suffered his first defeat. But after climbing in weight, the hitman bounced back. It was on February 27, 1982, that Hearns stopped a tough middleweight, Marcus Geraldo, in the first round. Geraldo had gone the distance with Hagler. And then, nine months later, Hearns met Wilfred Benitez head on for the WBC Super Welterweight title. The challenger pressed the defensive champion all night, picking his shots and scoring effectively. In the words of his trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, he had outboxed the boxer. Hearns had also fought the later rounds with a broken right hand, but after 15 rounds, Thomas Hearns had won the majority decision. The hitman had regained his pride and his status in boxing. Seven months later, Hearns stepped up in weight to meet a former light heavyweight contender named Murray Sutherland. Weighing 157 and a half pounds, the hitman once again proved his worth as a boxer. Sutherland later confided that he was hurt in the final round, calling Hearns a powerful middleweight puncher. Thomas called this fight a great test, stating it showed I belong in this division. It was hard to disagree. After crushing Duran in two brutal rounds, Thomas Hearns again successfully defended his WBC Super Welloway title with a third round knockout of Fred Hutchings. The rebirth of the Hitman has struck fear in the boxing world as Thomas Hearns seeks his third world title. It brings us to the fight. Both champions are peaking and both are determined. We feel that the jab is going to be a uh, key factor in the fight, uh, the left hand, because uh, we feel that if we can, once we can get Marvin to watch the left hand jab, get his mind on the left hand, then there will be no problem with getting all the shots off. Hearns' best uh, defense is his offense, because that's the only way that he knows how to fight. Uh, in my way, I had to make my defense my best offense. So, uh, and though that I have both ways, because once I get him in trouble, I can change it around. Thomas don't have that ability. I'm here to show the world that I have the ability, the punch and power, to get in there and knock out middleweights, light heavyweights, whatever, both ways all the way up to the light heavyweight division. I have that power. I have my mind focused on one thing, and that's to destroy him. That is to knock him out. If I have the opportunity, if it's there, I'm going to take it. I think that this fight here will put me in the position for to make greatness and uh, be, put me one step closer to greatness and wishes to win the four titles. That's what I feel, war. That's what's on my mind. I don't see the fight going to a round. I've been feeding the faith and I've been starving the doubt. So there's no doubt in my mind that I can't win this fight or that I won't knock Thomas Hearns out. still rankled at the cancellation two years ago by her. They train differently. An old-time fighter, Hagler. He trains at Provincetown on Cape Cod. Then he went to Palm Springs and closed his workouts to the public. 
Hearns came into Miami Beach and then moved right in here to Caesars Palace and had open sessions. In fact, he led Arabic dancing in the ring with six beauties there. It uh, sort of reminds you of Muhammad Ali in his training days. But they're all set now. They want to get to it, and we're going to get right down to ringside to Al Michaels and Al Bernstein. All right, Kurt. Well, everybody's been talking about it. And Hearns has certain hands beating the jab and power and all of that, and Hagler is more resolute. And there are a million different factors involved here, and that's why there's been so much talk about who will win. For each man to win, what has to happen? What's the key for each man? I think for Thomas Hearns, he wants to establish his jab. It's very important, and be able to drop the right hand. In. He thinks that he can do that against Hagler, and he thinks that he can keep Hagler on the outside by doing that. For Marvin Hagler, the key is to get by that jab, not just get by it, but get inside and then work to the body of that man, Thomas Hearns, and then eventually get to the head. I think the wild card is, will Marvin Hagler switch to righty effectively? If he does that, it might be the key to a victory for him. As is customary, it is the challenger who enters first into this Hagler's title. Even though Tommy has won two titles, he does not own the middle weight crown that he seeks tonight and thus he is the first to come in and the long wait is over as accompanied by the entourage she is out of the dressing room and about ready to enter the arena he's been lighthearted basically Kurt talking about the aerobic dancing and bringing folks into the ring and the open sparring sessions and open workouts. Quite serious right now, though, is Thomas Hearns. And appropriately entering the ring to hail to the victors the Michigan uh, fight song. Still not in view of most here in the arena yet is Hearns, so no response as yet, but very shortly he will be approaching that part of the arena here at Caesars Palace just about now where they're beginning to, to take notice of the entry of Thomas Hearns as he comes down the aisle. It's the second time Thomas Hearns has had this kind of situation. The last time, of course, against Sugar Ray Leonard, he hopes this turns out differently. Now he's spotted. Up the steps he comes. And into the ring he comes. Thomas Hearns. The only loss, of course, to Sugar Ray Leonard back in 1981. A fight in which he was ahead. He had shown his boxing skills in that fight against Leonard, and many think they may come into play tonight. If Hagler would hurt him early, as Leonard did, that man, Thomas Hearns, has the speed to get on his bicycle and duplicate what he did against Leonard, at least for a certain portion of those uh, fights. He'd like a first-round knockout here. He says he'll do it in three. We'll see. Took the ram out in two. After the fight, we will have it in it. Thomas Hearns. In the ring and awaiting Marvin Hagler, who loves to, among other things, make people wait. He is renowned, as you see, the very able corner of Thomas Hearns. And you know, when he fought Sugar Ray Leonard, Al, there was criticism of Emmanuel Stewart. Normally, a very calm corner for Thomas Hearns. On that night, the most pressure-packed of his career, there was some chaos in that corner. Emmanuel says, we learn from our mistakes with Leonard, and we feel uh, we've got it all together now. I'm curious as to the response when Hagler comes in. I thought it was sort of muted in a way. There was some cheering for Hearns, but nothing outrageous by, by any stretch of the imagination. Could just be a muted crowd right now. We're going to find out. It's possible, or in fact, uh, Hagler is the favorite of the crowd. Yeah. Which would be odd considering that, as you said, the betting money has switched back and forth. And if you talk, to, as I said, if you talk to any 10 people, you're going to find five for Hearns, five for Hagler. So it's been a very divided group of people here in Las Vegas and I suspect around the country as well. Here he comes. Marvelous Marvin Hagler out of Newark originally. Now Brockton, Massachusetts. Coming in to a mixed response. One 
theory is, for those who think Hagler will win, they say maybe this fight means a little bit more to Hagler than it does to Hearn. It means a lot, obviously, to both. But that theory goes that Marvin feels he'll never get the respect he's due unless he beats Thomas Hearns. And he is, still, of course, chasing the record of Carlos Monzon, looking for the 14th consecutive title defenses. He has 10 now. He's shooting for number 11. And indeed, the response to Marvin Hagler seems to be a little bit more than Thomas Hearns. It is. It is. A bigger hand for Hagler coming in, for what that's worth, than for the headman. When he came in against... Roberto Duran in his last big fight, it was just the opposite. So perhaps Marvin Hagler finally getting his due from boxing fans who on occasion have been indifferent to him. Bob Arum, the promoter, called him the Pete Rose of boxing. Hardworking, resolute, single-minded, 62-2. and two. The two losses early in his career, both in Philadelphia, both avenged. 50 knockouts. And it's been a long time since he knew what the word defeat was. Only the draw with Antifermo, any kind of stain on his record in recent years. And he certainly avenged that draw. A look at the tail of the tape. It tells you what you know probably already about the big reach advantage, the height advantage for Thomas Hearns. And uh, that's a key element in this fight. But for Marvin Hagler, he expects to get inside against Hearns. And if he doesn't do that, could have a long night. Can he possibly win if he doesn't get inside? Well, he could if he catches Hearns on the end of one of his uh, punches, perhaps a left hook. I think that's where him switching righty becomes a key factor. From the outside, I think he's much more effective as a righty. The common opponents, an indication there that Hearns, perhaps with more power, but Marcus Geraldo was not the fighter he was against Hearns that he was against Hagler and that knockout of Duran. So you can look on and on the number of punches. These are two fighters who will throw a lot of punches tonight. You see Marvin Hagler throws a lot. He's got a good jab, good combination puncher. The same is true of Thomas Hearns. Look at the number of punches he throws. A lot of left jabs snaking out there. So the pop and ceremony still taking place. We're going to have the national anthem shortly. Al, here's the difference now from Nevada. We go to WBC rules. And these will change somewhat. Ten point must system still in effect. There is no three knockdown rule. There is no standing eight count. Uh, you saved by the bell only in the last round. Again, the three judges will score the fight. International judges, the referee, or the ring doctor can stop the fight. Right now, let's go to the ring and a chuck hole. Ladies and gentlemen, I would direct your attention to the lighted tower, the fantasy tower at Caesar's Palace, just to the northeast of us, and you will see unfurled the largest American flag in the world. The flag was created by Mr. Ski Dembski, and now it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce a very talented young man as I ask you to rise, please, as our national anthem will be presented by Doc Severinsen. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, the officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next event of the evening. The judges are Dick Young of Los Angeles, California, Herb Santos of Reno, Nevada, and Harry Gibbs of England. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth, counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo, Flip Lomansky, and Charles Filippini. Your referee for the next event of the evening is Mr. Richard Steele. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, the WBC super welterweight champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing 159 and three quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 40 wins, one defeat, with 34 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Thomas the Hitman Hearn. And in the little corner, fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts, weighing 159 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 60 wins, two defeats, two draws, and 50 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hedger. Instructions in the dress room. I'm just cautioning you now. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands and go like a boat fight. Let's go. Very simple instructions. And finally, it's Hagler against Hearns. The camera's going to have to go. Eloquent simplicity by Richard Steele. Let's go. He knows, they know. Staring at each other through the national anthem. It's there down, of course, so customary before these fights. And here we go, round one. Hagler, right off the bat, attempting to get inside. He'd love to be able to pin Hearns on the ropes if he can. A more aggressive start by Hagler. Look at him, right for the body. Marvin Hagler only wants the body. He bangs Marvin. Oh, Hearns may have hurt him with a right hand. Hurt him with another right. Hearns hits him with an uppercut. Hagler, he's hurt, hurt. Marvin ties him up. Marvin Hagler is still hurt. So it was Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler. But Hearns didn't flinch. Marvin going for the body. Wild first round. Wow, what a shot. And it was Hagler who initiated it, not Thomas Hearns. And a left by Hagler. Hagler. Hearns comes back. Another right. That one stunned Hearns. What a first minute of the fight. Hearns has been able to drop that right hand in and it has hurt Hagler, a surprise to many people. Another right hand from Hearns. Hearns moving. Hagler still pursuing. Comes in with the right. Hits him with the left hook. Here's where I believe Hagler should turn to right. He could block that right hand easier and he would land his own left hook. Hearns with a devastating punch. Swelling near Hagler's left eye again. Tommy trying to come inside the hands of Hagler. Low blow by Hearns. Hagler's still looking for the body. A right by Hagler. Good right got in. He has Hearns where he'd love to keep him on the ropes, but Tommy comes off easily. Another good right by Hearns. Hagler is now shaking those right hands off, though, Al. He was stunned a little early, and he's normally a slow starter. He's also bleeding. Hagler is cut. Hagler is cut. Bridge of the nose. Watch that right. Hearns tries to come in with the uppercut. And Hagler ties him up with a minute to go in a wild first round. Marvin with a good left hand. There's blood all over Marvin Hagler's face. Can't tell where it's coming from. I thought it started in the bridge of the nose originally, but blood all over the face of Hagler here in round one. That's but Hagler has him on the ropes. Hagler working on him. Hagler relentless, but Hearns trying to box his way out. Half 
a minute to go in round one. How far can this one go? That's this very important. This is where Hadler wants it, but Hearns counter punching off those ropes fairly effectively. Tremendous first round. Hagler hitting him to the ropes, working on it, but Hearns uppercutting again. Hagler bloody. A tremendous hurt. Sensational first round, and Hearns gets hurt. Hearns got stunned. Hagler was stunned early in the round. Great first round. Wow. Talking to 
Mr. Hearn. They work on the cut of Hagler. And the Petronelli's good cut men. Goody and Pat have done an excellent job on the cuts of Hagler. What a shock that that man initiated this war right from the beginning. And you know what? I thought he would do well as a righty. He has done better as a southpaw, and he may stay at that. Again, Stewart telling Hearns to box. As you say, though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Well, he turns righty. He wants it to be a street fight. Listen, Marvin Hagler has been rough inside. He's thrown some low blows. He has thrown some elbows. But you know what? Now the right is getting there, but it's not hurting Hagler. We've got our answer, I think, to some extent. Tommy has been, has been hard-pressed to hurt him with that right. Stunned him early, but not in the last round or two. Very early. Had him stunned, has him cut. But it was Hagler doing the damage in round two. And now, just as we thought might happen, Tommy Hearns was hurt early, so he is boxing. Now, he has good boxing skills. He did this against Sugar Ray. Can Hagler get to him in this posture? Some people thought, as he again becomes off balance, some thought that if, if Hearns stayed outside and stayed on his bike, so it would become a dull fight with Marvin chasing him. But Marvin has been able to corner him. And when Marvin gets him in the corner, he is roughhousing him well. Again, Hagler is all bloody. Time is called by Richard Steele to send Hagler over to the ring doctor. He's calling the ring doctor in. Of course, the last thing in the world Hagler wants is the fight to be stopped. The doctor looks at it. Back comes Hagler with a wild left hand. It has to be impeding his baby with the right eye. You never know what to Tremendous right. Hearns appears rubbery. He well, agreed that way in the second round. You know, Richard Steele is breaking these fighters very quickly. That's uncharacteristic of him. It's hurting Hagler because he wants to work inside. Hearns is smiling, but he's taking shots. Another right hand. Hearns turns his back, takes another right. Hearns in deep trouble again. Hearns is down. Hearns is down in the third round and on his back. And he's not going to beat the count. I don't believe. Tommy Hearns tries to get up. Does he get up? He it's just Hagler. doesn't know. He can't continue. It's Hagler, full of blood. Blood, no doubt, impeding his vision. Stopping under the third round after Hearns almost ended it on a first-round knockout. It didn't go very far, but it was a beauty. And Tommy Hearns predicted a knockout in the third. Instead, it is Marvin Hagler, and we certainly hope Tommy Hearns will be all right. He is still wobbly. What a shot. Instead of Hearns initiating wild early action, it is this man who, believe me, has gained any redemption he needed from the loss to Roberto Duran. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. So close to being knocked out in the first round. What stood the barrage? You'd have to figure he lost round one, came back round two, despite the deep cut time called by Richard Steele in round three. Ring doctor observes, comes back, knocks him out in round three. So it's marvelous Marvin Hagler, 61, 2 and 2. Another look as we watch it at the end. Hagler with that right hand, that lunging right hand. Hearns turning his back on him, and then you'll see Hagler come in and deliver a right to the side of the head. Hearns backing off again, taking the right hand. Legs gone at that point. Down on his back, got up at the count of 10. That was the end of it. Different angle. Hearns, whose legs became rubbery in the second round, having trouble with his balance in round three. Turning his back. Another right hand from Hagler. But at this point, the damage had been done. Finishing right, right there. But Hearns was on his way down anyway. Only disappointment is that it didn't go longer. What a three rounds. Different angle again now. Right hand from Hagler. And Hearns at that point finished. Off balance and stumbling. And so the man from Brockton, Massachusetts may finally get the respect that he feels he deserves. And acclaim is one of the greatest middleweights in history. Doing nothing to dispute that tonight. Shaking off some thunderous blows in round one. Withstanding the barrage, suffering the cut, coming back strong in round two, finishing them 
in round three. Hearns right above us in the corner. Tommy still shaking. Tommy on his stool. And Tommy, of course, very disappointed and frustrated. As Marvin Hagler, marvelous Marvin Hagler, the legal name, retains the undisputed middleweight title. And let's go to Al Bernstein. Now. Marvin Hagler in a, a chaotic ring here. He says, he says, am I the greatest? And I guess so, Marvin. Marvin, it was, I guess, one of the, perhaps one of the best three-round fights ever. Maybe one of the best middleweights. I guess you did. All Here right. comes Tommy Hearns to say congratulations. We're happy to see that Tommy's all right. And a lot of congratulations Woo! going around and a lot of water as well. Marvin, you... Marvin, you took the action to Tommy right away. You went right for his body. He looked like he stunned you momentarily with the right and the first. Did that right hurt you? No, it didn't bother me. It just made me matter. Okay. I told you I was going to eat him up like Pat, man. I figured <laughs> once I get through the right hand, then it was all mine, you know, because I think the first big one, what you tried, yeah. tried to put me away out there. And I think that's when I got the cut there, but well, I wanted to show the world I am the greatest now. Well, you are the greatest no, no. middleweight. There's no doubt no, no, no. about that. Did I say three? <laughs> You went right for the body. Was that your plan immediately? That was the way we planned. I want to thank all my sparring partners. Especially, I want to thank God for giving me the strength and the courage, and uh, and, and and the confidence to go in here and to know that I I was the one. I was the champion, but I had to fight like a challenger. That fight, I think, took tremendous courage on your part for this reason. You walked right in against the cannon. You were willing to take the right hand to knock him out. You got it. I figured I had to take punches or to give some, but I told you he was going to get some too. This was, in some ways, not like the Marvin Hagler we've often seen. Not the ring technician. You were, you bombed. That's it. That's what I felt. I felt as though in every one of my fights I've been fighting, I, I improved and I put it all together in this fight. <laughs> the Petronelli's here. I guess you've got to be just thrilled with this. It probably your biggest moment. The greatest. There's this guy. Does he now that we take care of the, the, the you know the That's white the guys? Uh, the hurt man. The hit man. He's, oh, he's the real I want to say uh, to all the people out there who spent their money. I hope that you got your money's worth. Because Tommy's a hell of a fighter, and uh, I think I put all my all out here, but uh, the better man won tonight. You have talked about going after Monzone's record. Um, is it still on your mind? And I guess this just fuels you. Getting that record might put you in that class of the greatest middleweight. Definitely. Uh, I'm still after Monzone's record, but I don't think that I'll have a, a big uh, media hype as I did with this one. So I'm going to continue. Okay. This is one of my toughest fights. Marvin, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Let's go back to Kurt Gowdy. There's been a lot of talk about Hagler retiring. His wife, Bertha's here. There are four children, and she wants him to retire. When they ask... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Let's go down referee the Richard round. Steele stops about at two minutes, one second of the third round. The winner by a TKO, and still undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hagler. So official at 201 round three, Hagler saying he hopes everybody got their money's worth. <laughs> It was a great eight minutes. It was a great 801. It was an incredible, it was an incredible uh, fight. And for Marvin Hagler, I'll tell you what, he did the unexpected, Al. He walked right into the cannons that Tommy Hearns had. He said, I'm going to take what I have to take in order to bomb my way to victory. It was uncharacteristic, but it was exciting, and it was a man looking to gain ultimate respect from the boxing community. I, I found it fascinating in a way that you, you said to him, were you hurt? When we sit here at ringside, and I don't know, sometimes it's a little distorted on television, you knew he was hurt yes. when Hearns hit him, and yet he said, no, it just made me mad, well, but you knew he was hurt. I think he was, certainly, I think he was certainly stunned in any case, and I think uh, the fact of the matter is that he was not hurt to the point where Marvin Hagler goes down. Well, Marvin Hagler just doesn't go down. This is a man with such incredible grit and such courage. I just don't think you can say enough about that because he went in against a very good puncher, welterweight, junior middle or middle, took the best he could offer, and just his determination and heart won it. Some thought that he would take Hearns' best shot and leer at him or grin at him. He certainly didn't do that. He was stunned by it, but he was able to withstand it, win the second round, knock him out in the third. 
Okay, Kurt, so Teddy Brenner, who has seen a few fights in his time, <laughs> three of the greatest rounds of boxing, little doubt about it. And since this one ended early, we can go back and view it in its entirety. And we'll go back and replay it for you, beginning with round one and the original commentary. Mr. Murray, before these fights, and here we go.
looks like what he's going to try and do in this fight. Turn, off balance, off balance, and Butler now, steps on. Not Hagler, to a knockdown. Excuse me, Al. Hagler turns righty. I think this could be a key moment in this fight. For the first time, Hagler switching, gets in with a left hand. This round sort of the way people anticipate the first round yes. might go. Another right hand, stun turns. The crowd, of course, emphatic over every punch that's thrown. Hagler, despite that recent disadvantage, has been able to get into her, and more so I think most people expected. For one simple reason, good left hook by Hagler. He took the best hand Hearns could offer, and he did come in. He's, he's getting through that right hand, even though he's getting hit with it. Halfway through, round two. Tommy Hearns tries to get up, and he... They've got to stop this fight. Does he get up? 
of boxing. Kurt Gowdy, you have seen World Series and announced Super Bowls and just about everything in your lifetime. I'd have to think you thought that was a pretty good fight as well. Well, that's right. I never saw a better three rounds. You know, I was just sitting here. I live in Boston, not far from Brockton. I know a Hagler, and uh, he's a very conservative man out of the ring, good family man, sort of leads an old-fashioned life, but he has sort of reconciled himself. He was put up on the rack for a year to finally get title shots and then hit the big money, which he did tonight for $10 million. Al, you mentioned he's 30 years old. His manager, Goody Petronelli, told me that he may be 30, but he's in perfect condition. He keeps himself in perfect condition and believes he has another four or five very good years, and I, I believe the same thing. One thing I think we all overlooked a little bit, and Petronelli told me, Kurt, if you'll examine his record, some of his best fights have been against tall men. Jamie Thomas, Fully Bell, Willie the Worm, Monroe, all were 6'1 or 6'2. And many were doubting that at 5'9 Hagler, uh, giving up three inches of reach to uh, Hearn, could fight well against a tall man. But he showed you that he has fought well against tall men. But uh, he's hit it tonight, and uh, he'll go home to New England and Brockton. They had the first hero there, Rocky Marciano, and now they have, of course, Marv Hagler. Fifth, uh, 18 championship bouts for Sugar Ray Robinson in the middleweight division. Uh, this was Marv Hagler's 12th, and we keep mentioning he dearly wants to break Monzone's record of 14 title defenses. This was his 11th tonight, so you, you can be sure he's going to hang in there to try and beat that record. So there you have it. The middleweight champ still, Marvin Hagler. So that's the story from Caesars Palace, where Marvin Hagler has beaten Thomas Hearn in the third round technical knockout. And for Al Michaels and Al Bernstein, I'm Kurt Gowdy saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada. The executive producer for Top Rank is Bob Arum. Tonight's telecast was produced by Ross Greenberg. Directed by Mark Payton. The director for Top Rank was Joe Assetti. The associate producers were Rick Bernstein and Linda Jackson Christian. The associate directors are Michael Whalen and Peter DiPaolo. And the production manager, Angelo Manchuso. The assistant to the producer, David Harmon.